I'm Ricardo Carrioni. I am Deputy Ambassador of Nicaragua to the UK, to Ireland, and to Iceland, and I love cigars. <laughs> it's a tough question to think about, but if I were a biscuit, I think I would be a Belvita. It's one of those biscuits that look fairly healthy and good for you, and it's only a couple of calories, and you have you have a little bit of them. But then what happens after a while, you end up having the whole box and more. So they end up every, every, taking over you. So let's go with the Belvita. Um, huh. Right, so for embarrassing, back then, I didn't think it was embarrassing. I thought it was really, really cool. But I have to go back in time and go back to my um, 15 up to 20, 21 years old. I went through a very heavy hippie phase. So throughout all this time, my favorite, and I thought I was looking great, was wearing my dyed out, psychedelic, very loose, very big shirts. And you have to sort of picture me with a very long hair, probably 30 pounds, 40 pounds less. So I lost skinnier uh, than I am now. Um, now I'm too fat. And so I would wear these crazy shirts, the long hair, and my favorite pants. And I used to get loads of those from friends I used to work in hospitals where the nurse doctor's pants. Uh, normally sandals. I used to live in Florida during a lot of that time. So sandals, the pants from the doctors and the, the scrubs that they wear, um, my dyed out shirt. And I always had this sort of um, needed woven um, bag that I used to carry. I think it was a Colombian indigenous one and I had a Nicaraguan one. So that, I suppose if I was to wear that now, probably feel very embarrassed. And there's some photos out there, luckily not on social media <laughs> of those ages. Um, but yeah, that was my hippie face that um, looks pretty ridiculous nowadays. Hmm, let me think, ridiculous facts. Um, okay, so um, one thing I love, um, and I've been sort of, um, sounds weird, but something I've been sort of collecting are palindromes. So I'm not sure if, if you know, a, a palindrome is a, word or a number or a phrase or sequence of characters that read backwards and forward the same. For example, um, madam or race car. So in Spanish, I have many of them that I've been collecting and some of my favorite writers, those of you who speak Spanish will know Julio Cortazar, an Argentinian, great ones. But thinking, bringing it to English, um, most of them in English are sort of character units. So like we said, civic, or radar or level. My favorite, and it's almost sort of mystical when you think of who thinks and how these palindromes come about. So my favorite in English is a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. So if you read that letter by letter backwards, it's the exact same thing. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Now, they're also um, the ones that are sort of word units and supposed to character units. So a good one that is also crazy um, in terms of words. So if you say something like, is it crazy how saying things backwards creates backward sentences saying how crazy it is? So if you read all that sentence, word by word, it's exactly the same one back and forth. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a palindrome freak, I suppose, and have a little book um, that I'm trying to make digital someday into my, my love for palindromes. Uh, in Spanish, one of my favorite ones is uh, atar a la rata, tie the rat. <laughs> so yeah, palindromes are my favorite. Right, my most useless talent. I'm sure I have many of them, but if I have to think of the least useful of all, and if it's actually considered a talent, and I work for this, I can move my ears, you see? <laughs> so I can move my ears. I don't know what it was going to be that talent helpful for, but one day moving my ears might, might do something for me. God knows. <laughs> I'll try once again. Here we go. Moving my ears. <laughs> so if somebody was to call my house and say, hey, Ricardo is arrested, they will probably the first thing they would think is, oh, no, immigration got him. So, and it's not because I don't travel with proper passports, but this is all based on something that happened to me. And this is factual a few years ago. So in an airport, as I'm on my way to get into the plane and, and there is this sort of pathway that you go after you show your passport and they go, yeah, go ahead. This is the, the lady or the guy at the counter from the airline. I go past that point and I'm walking through it. 
This is actually in Heathrow Airport. Um, and then on the parallel to where you're going, there's people potentially coming from other planes. So as I'm walking there, and I was the first one, so I'm not following anyone. There's people behind me. And as I'm walking in, I see this door on the left, and there's a, a pathway on the right. And for some reason in my head, I'm thinking, should I go right or left? So I took, I took a left and I went to the left, the door opened. And as I opened and I went, I started seeing people coming towards me. And then I look back and the door slowly closes behind me. And as I try to grab it, the door is closed. People come from the plane. Then I realized that everybody starts going towards the plane, the whole different section. I knock, people look at me and they say, well, sorry, too bad, basically. We can't help you. This doesn't unlock, I have a plane to catch. So I ended up getting into what they call sort of a, it's people having gone through immigration control. So I had to basically go with everyone else through the flow, go back in. Um, immigration stopped me because they say, wait, hold on. So how come are you coming from a plane by your number? but you have to get in another plane? So long story short, I had to be stopped for a while through immigration. I had to call in the people from the embassy I was flying with to tell them I was going to have to wait and catch the next flight because I had to go through the whole immigration thing all over again. So no, no special treatment for diplomats when you mess up with immigration. Um, so yeah, they wouldn't be surprised on the first thing was, hey, hey, is Ricardo again in trouble? Did he take the wrong turn at the airport and immigration stop him? <laughs> it's the most famous person on my phone book, guy. There's probably a couple of people that are more famous perhaps to, to me, or but in terms, I can think of two. So one of them is the president of my country, um, Daniel Ortega, who I think is probably the most, one of the most well-known Latin American political figures um, and one of and the most successful president in terms of his history of elections in, in the country. So Daniel Ortega is one in a more light, harder one. So I'll give you another example of someone else that's there who's very famous in Northern Ireland. So he's very famous in Belfast. Um, I met her there very randomly on a visit in Belfast, her name is Brona. And Brona is very, she's an actress that comes in uh, Pulp Fiction, in the movie. So it's not on my term, man, uh, but it's Brona. So you ask uh, Belfast and Northern Irish about Brona. Um, she's a well-known folklore singing um, actress um, who I randomly met in Belfast and I have it on my phone as well. She, she's called me a couple of times. So Ortega and Brona, Nicaragua and, and Northern Ireland are two people I can think of on my phone. Frankly, I'm not a fan of flavored crisps. I love crisps or as I used to call them before I moved to the UK, chips, as they call it in the States. But crisps, um, and I know how big they are here in the UK, there's all this um, even contests of the of people suggesting these crazy flavor combinations that then walkers and other companies end up making um, crisps out of them for a trial. But I'll go very, very basic. So if I can't find my crisps completely just salted, um, I can go with vinegar. Um, so salt, vinegar, or just salt. A bit, bit boring on that one, unfortunately. In my life, I've eaten some strange things for various reasons. Some of it because of diplomacy itself, but um, I think... One of the most weirdest things and disgusting that I've eaten back in my days living in Asia, um, I would go um, in non-diplomatic roles, I would go to China frequently. And one of those trips to China, I decided to walk around and, and ended up just bumping into these stalls um, and giving a try. I had a feast of scorpions, um, just sort of kebab like um, skewers, um, skewer um, scorpions. So they were pretty big and pretty mean looking. So I, I had a level of satisfaction in this really mean, big creature that I'm usually really, really scared about. So I had a feast of scorpions in uh, Beijing uh, a few years ago. That's probably pretty disgusting, I think. Hmm. I always sort of fantasize with having superpowers. And I think through, through life, I've had different moments where I admire and, and dream about having different ones. Um, if I have to think of one that and this is really fictional, crazy stuff, right? I mean, I don't actually think of doing this, but what would be great is to be able to get in people's mind in terms of being able to control people or animals, to control their bodies. For example, if you could get in the head or in the body of an eagle and fly around or get in the body of Mike Tyson and feel what it's like to be Mike Tyson and, and be able to throw a few punches with him and his mind. So sort of like the the Game of Thrones type of thing that you can go and get your eyes all white and get in somebody's head and and be for a moment Mike, more moment Mike Tyson or, or be an eagle or, or, or an lion, God knows. 
but yeah, we'll go with that, taking over over people's bodies and mind, as scary as that sounds. <laughs> My favorite songs. I have I have many songs I like, and, and so I, I have to be selective on this one. It depends on the moment. And one thing I've found through through time is I, I like almost every kind of genre. And I still haven't found a single genre where there's not at least one song I like. So I can say that genre is completely rubbish because at least there will be one song, even country, which are not one of my favorites. I will find some cool country tunes. So from classical, jazz, to all the way to reggaeton and whatever it might be. And many of my favorites are in Spanish as I grew up in Latin America, Nicaragua, and there's a great rock uh, scene from the 60s onwards. But I'll pick one that I always sort of go back to um, when I need kind of a, put it really, really loud and get, get sort of a, an anthem to get some energy in. I'm a huge, huge Radiohead fan and I love um, Just. So the, the you do it to yourself, just you, you and no one else. You do it to yourself, just you. And then, then it goes, I don't know how to sing it because I'm a horrible singer, but I love, I love Radiohead and I love Just. So for now, today, that's that's my favorite song. <laughs>